What's up, the Static Family? Told you we was coming back with another one. We got the greatest small forward in NBA history, Bird vs. James. This is a live reaction. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that sub button, and comment below. Let's get it. I know it's live and legendary when you're in here. Shout out to them real legends. You know, I'm going to act Big Bird. I'm going to act James. I know that's live. Larry Bird at his best, LeBron James at his best. And do we have to put the teams too, or just individual players? If there's a draft, oh my God. you can take Bird or LeBron. Oh. So let, let's say I take Larry at this age when I think he averaged 30, 10, and 7, something like that, and LeBron right now. So you got Larry Legend okay, or LeBron. Okay, now what rules, One, are we, what rules are we playing to? We're playing today's rules. <laughs> oh, I got to go with Larry Joe. I got to go with Larry Joe oh, in today's God. rules. You can't yeah. touch him. Yeah. And Larry, so this is 27, 28 year old Larry and 27, 28 year old LeBron, yeah. right? Or is he 30 now, right? 30. Yeah. So 30 year old Larry, 30 year old LeBron. Okay, give me give me Bird's stats at 30. At 30. Because that, that, that was an MVP season, I think. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, 30 points a game, nine rebounds, six assists, two steals, and a block. Uh, can I answer that question now? That's a lot. Larry Joe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So Larry if he averaged 30 back then, you take Larry Joe. Larry Joe uh, <laughs> for the win. I know where we're going with this. I, is he in your top 10? Yeah, he's in my top 10. Is he ahead of Larry Bird? You got a strange <laughs> top 10. Hold on, is he ahead of Larry Bird? No. Skip, Reggie would take Bird over LeBron. Do you concur, my friend? Stephen A. Smith, I do concur. I do agree. I can understand how some people... Larry Bird was better than most people think. And so make your argument for Bird. In a hypothetical draft, that's what they started off with, I, I'll take it at any age. You, you can do it at 18 or 22 or 26, 28, or as they finally concluded at age 30. I'm going to take Larry Bird just a little bit over LeBron James. Now, you can argue, oh, LeBron is such a superior athlete, and I will not argue back. But as an all-around basketball player, as a leader, and especially as a clutch shooting difference maker, I'm all about Larry Bird. He was a bad boy. For those of us, those in the audience who are just too young to know, bad boy. Bird's a better shooter. It's not close. Uh, I think Bird is as, okay, as we, good or better as a passer. We do Bird's know a better rebounder. Better shooter from LeBron at any distance. As for the outside shooting, this isn't really close. And the only reason his three-point numbers aren't gaudier is the simple fact that hardly any threes were taken back then, right. much less practiced. Right and yet Bird still shot over 40% five times, including two 50-40-90 seasons. Bird was not just a superior shooter from anywhere on the court, just like you highlighted. Not only was he a near 90% shooter from the free throw line, which LeBron could never brag about, but also, Larry Bird was Mr. Clutch. When the ball, when the game was on the line, you knew that the ball was going in Larry Bird's hands, and there was little to nothing that you could do to stop him because he was that much of a marksman, oh, a no. marksman of the highest order, one of the most lethal marksmen we've ever seen in the game's history. Three-point shooting, percentage, whatever you want to do, and especially from the free throw line where he often led the league in free throw percentage did Larry Bird. Bird was consistently among the best free throw shooters each season, while the bronze best year at the line was still six points lower than Bird's worst year. It's <laughs> real legend.
that's how it overall really field goal percentages are remarkably similar. But as we showed earlier, LeBron does the vast majority of his damage near the rim, where Larry was able to match the field goal percentage by taking many more shots from outside. You know, LeBron's uh, physical, if not athletic ability, is a gift. Larry's IQ and basketball uh, competitiveness is, yeah. you know, un un uncanny. Like, Larry's ability to make tough shots. Better rebounder. Clearly just a little bigger. Uh, had a little more better knack under the basket for acquiring rebounds, a la Dennis Rodman as a below-the-rim, six-foot-nine-inch rebounder. He's not in Bird's league when it comes to passing. Larry Bird was a better passer, in my, in my mind, a much more fluid, much more uh, natural passer than LeBron James, a creative passer. Because Larry Bird had the passing gift. And then we come to defense. If you look at defensive wind shares, Larry Bird actually ranks ahead of LeBron James by one spot. And that's because all of his basketball genius we saw on the offensive end translated to the defensive side of the ball as well. And when he was young and healthy, he made some plays that might, just might, remind you of some of the things we saw LeBron do. His quick hands allowed him to strip the ball, and in fact, he averaged the same amount of steals per game that LeBron does now. Larry Bird, as you know, Stephen A could wreak havoc on defense to the point that he often led LeBron in the steals category. So I'm going to give Larry a slight balancing edge there. Then we get to leadership, intangibles. They spilled over from Larry Bird, as you well know, because you're old enough to have covered him, which is why Larry Bird has three rings, lost two finals, no shame there, to Magic, Kareem, Worthy, Byron Scott, Michael Cooper, all the rest. Would I take him over LeBron James to start my my franchise? Yes, I would. And, and I don't think it's even close. One area Larry was far superior in was his use of the left hand. There were sections of whole games where he'd only shoot with his offhand, and he had such control and touch with it, you'd never know exactly how to guard him once he got within 10 feet of the basket. I can't think of another player who used his ability to score with his offhand as often as Bird did, and Back even 25 years later, these are still the most impressive of his highlights, something LeBron cannot do. Well, let me say this. Um, I think that LeBron James is a superior athlete. I think for the first 45 to 46 minutes of a game, I don't know if there's anybody in the world that you can pick over LeBron James because he's a freak of nature, a physical freak of nature, being the fact that he's 6'8", 250 pounds, locomotive coming at you. Larry definitely had more skill, while LeBron brought more physical gifts. But there's no way on earth that I'd pick him over Larry Bird in the clutch. I can tell you that much. And that brings us to clutch performance. Those moments when everyone in the building knows who's getting the ball, and as that clock winds down, do you have the clutch gene to nail the shot? When it comes down to the end of a game in a championship series, I would rather have Larry Bird have the basketball. While we don't have the advanced stats from Bird's era, we're going to have to use anecdotal evidence to show that time and again, the Celtics went to him in the waning seconds of the game, and it was a rare occasion when he didn't come through for them. At the very least, there was never ever a time when Bird was afraid to shoot the ball in those pressure situations. No sense. He would inevitably find some way to get open. Remember, they would hardly ever run a straight isolation out top and have him create off the dribble. Bird would flash open, find some sort of sliver of daylight, okay. and get the jumper off. Again, these were moments when going to the basket wasn't preferable because the referees would definitely let the players decide these games. Foul calls were hard to come by, so it made more sense to do your best to get off a clean look from the outside. And Larry Bird was as good as anyone in this era with his knack for being in the right place at the right time, dropping in shots from all angles and degree of difficulty. LeBron's clutchiness is a bit more complicated. There have been a few times where he hasn't been the man down the stretch, and it has opened him up to quite a bit of criticism for not being that clutch player. Mark Stein wrote an article on ESPN.com about this, and with the help of advanced analytics and play-by-play -play data, 
We can quantify how LeBron has shot when attempting a tying or go-ahead shot in the final five seconds of the fourth quarter or overtime. As of March 1st of this year, he was a very mortal 5 for 47, or 10.6% over the past 10 seasons, whereas the league average on these shots is 22.7%. An intangible about winning. It is something that LeBron James took years to learn, even though he deserves to be respected and that should not be held against him. What's undeniable, Skip, is that Larry Bird, whatever intangibles LeBron James strived to develop and ultimately did to some degree, but is still working on in terms of its completion, Larry Bird walked into the NBA with that attitude. He walked into the NBA with that gift. And there was an accountability factor that came with being on the floor with Larry Bird because there was a certain level of excellence that was expected and there was a certain you know level of dereliction of duty that would not be tolerated. We've seen LeBron James tolerate a lot of things throughout the years, trying to fit in, trying to get along, trying to be that, you know, what he thought a leader was supposed to be. Larry Bird never paid any attention to any of that. He was Larry Bird, and he came in there with a level of greatness coming from Indiana State, and he put the basketball world on notice that he was going to be a legend, and he was going to be a winner. And anybody that played with him had damn well better adopt that attitude, or they were not going to be wearing the same uniform as him. That was Larry Bird, and, and, and we haven't seen that really from LeBron James, to be quite honest with you. So, you know, in terms of leadership, in terms of clutch, in terms of shooting ability, and overall championship credentials, not just trophies, but a mentality, Larry Bird gets the nod over LeBron James. But you still can't dismiss the greatness of LeBron James. LeBron can be great, but he needs he needs that other guy to sometimes to carry him. He needs the Kyrie Irving to make the shots down the stretch. Uh, he's incredible in a Magic Johnson sort of way in that he makes uh, generally makes others better. I all just agree that Bird's better. Bird's yeah. better. Because it annoys LeBron fans. <laughs> I must admit... <laughs> I am shocked that you're not defending LeBron a little harder because I anticipated I you would. I can't. No? Money time, whether it's a particular juncture in the season where you're trying to position yourself for the playoffs, or you're talking about the last minutes of a game, or you're talking about the last shot in a game, or you're talking about a game seven, or you're talking about anything that, that indicates clutch. You simply can't pick LeBron over Larry Bird because... You can pick almost no one in NBA history over Larry Bird because he was a marksman of the highest order. When it was money time, you knew where the ball was going, and you also knew there was little to nothing that you could do about it. It was just a matter of whether or not Larry Bird was going to make it or miss it. It was not a matter of what he was going to put himself in position to do or what he was going to be capable of doing because he was that big time. He was Larry Bird. I have to, I can't deny that. We take a quick look at those stats, the age 30 stats between Larry Bird and LeBron James. Larry Bird got him by three points in, in overall average scoring. Th three rebounds a game he's got him by, which is pretty significant. Got him slightly in assists, which surprised me. Field goal percentage is substantial, 52.3 to 48.8. Wow. And then finally, that was another year. Larry Bird at 91% led the league in free throw percentage. You're talking about more possessions, more three-point shots, more points. Sure. And you're going to have greater stats. So it's stats a little bit on steroids. Can we even make a fair comparison of two players from completely different eras. While Bird was doing the mullet, LeBron was doing the headband. And he loads up the stat sheet like we've never seen before. And part of the loading up the stat sheet is basketball's played differently than it's ever been played before. What you also have to consider, Skip, is that Larry Bird deserves even more credit when you look at those numbers because the game was played considerably tougher then. It was more physical. You can get up in people. You know, you had the bad boys and everybody else still in the game and being very, very relevant. We all know the, bait, the game of professional basketball in the NBA is called soft as putty right now. You pass gas, you'll get called for a foul. Yeah. You touch somebody's fingernails, you might get ejected. I agree. I mean, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. So the fact that back then it being so tougher and Larry Bird having the quality of teammates that he had, and McHale and Dennis Johnson and others, to sit there and put up those kind of numbers is, a, is another testament to his greatness because he was playing in a time where they did not mind sharing the wealth. 
We know how unselfish he was about sharing the wealth. Flick it or tap it or bounce it to a teammate without even catching it. Bounce Bird. Nice tip to McHale. Three years you let ever want to see. Pass to Bird. Behind. And yet he was still able to register those kind of numbers. So Larry Bird deserves a whole lot of credit for that. I agree with you. I I'm guessing that right now about 80% of our viewing audience does not agree with either one of us. Well, that, 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 all that means is that they don't know anybody. They don't know. Because we, 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 we're you. giving them facts. I would love to pick LeBron uh, if, if he deserved it, but I don't think he deserves it over Bird, over the Larry legend that we watched in terms of what I told you, those 45 minutes you know, an 82-game schedule, those, he deserves it in that level. But in terms of clutch, money time, there's no there's no contest. He's not even in Larry Bird's class. Real edge. Heard what Jeffrey said. Miller, right, push G. off on Michael Jordan, going over the left shoulder for three. When the Pacers hit the shot, and Bird just sat there and did not move. The whole world is going crazy. They pan the camera to Larry Bird. He didn't even move. Standing there like he has ice water in his veins. Uh, so really you know what I'm talking about. I'm like, <laughs> what, what is that? It's, he's not even human. I, I, I've never seen anything like that in my life. He didn't even blink. Talk about calm under pressure, right? And that's the way he was as a player. He and doesn't even blink. I mean, did he Did he ever get excited? Did you ever hear him yell? Yes, he got excited. Absolutely. But we, we, we treat it. Larry Bird, like E.F. Hutton, when he talked, people listened. Nah. He didn't say too much, but when he did, he had our attention. Larry Joe Bird beat every single last real nigga in his era. Everybody. Nobody else can say it. Not Magic, not Kareem, not MJ. Nobody can say that they beat every single last real nigga in their era. Definitely. Bird did that. He beat everybody in the 80s, nigga. Can't nobody say that. He beat Dr. J. He beat Moses. He beat Magic, Kareem, Worthy. He beat Isaiah Thomas, Dumars, uh, Rodman. He beat Adrian Deadly. Larry Bird cooked this nigga Rodman so bad. He cooked the nigga so bad. The nigga Rodman said, only reason Bird get that much hype is because he white. <laughs> You know what that sound like to me? That sound like that nigga Ramen was so salty he got cooked by Bird that he was like, hey man, only reason y'all boosted him is because he white. He beat how many, bro? You know how many niggas Bird beat, bro? Can't nobody say that. MJ didn't beat um Bird. MJ didn't even get a game. Right. Not one, bro. Not one. God in tennis shoes. The GOAT. That's my man, but he swept him. And you know what sweep means? That means. I think he beat him in Boston, and then he went to Chicago. See, my thing with him beating Jordan is, damn, Jordan, you couldn't get one? You feel me? Jordan couldn't even get one. Magic never beat uh, Jordan. You feel me? You, when you really, like, line it up, like, Kareem never beat Michael. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody can say that they beat everybody. And Bird is the nigga to actually walk in the room and say, say, bro, look out. I beat you, you, Handle. you, you, I swept you. You supposed to be the go, bro. I swept you twice. Oh, I forgot to tell you, he swept him again in 87. 87, y'all, Jay, look at y'all. In 87, he swept him. LeBron fans, y'all gonna hate me. Real legend. It's legendary. Y'all already know Big Bird. Come on. Real legend.